Minecraft has three dimensions, the overworld, the nether, and the end. Each one more important than the last. But one of these is not like the others. One of these is the worst feature of Minecraft that every player has to suffer through. You, me, and the entire Minecraft community, all of us have to slog through this one experience. Let's briefly go through all three of them to highlight why one of them is vastly different from the rest. Beginning with the overworld. The overworld is a gorgeous, serene, and peaceful landscape with nostalgic music playing in the background, each track carrying their own memories. Flat open plains, villagers and iron golems, vast open caves filled with minerals and resources waiting to be harvested. The overworld focuses on the most important character of the story, you, the player. It's your journey as a newcomer hiding in a panic hole on your first night into becoming the seasoned Minecraft player you are today. But down below, deep underneath the ground and through an obsidian portal, you have the Nether. A fiery hellscape with danger at every corner. It's intense and the music reflects that. Souls and valleys trapped with skeletons, ready to shoot you down. Crimson forests with piglins and hoglins, both hostile mobs. Nether fortresses, the most dangerous structure of all. But unfortunately, they're also the most important. The nether makes you fear for your life. It forces you to be alert and keeps you on edge. For every move you make counts, and a small mistake could easily snowball into your death. And finally, back into the overworld, far into the woods, across the deepest oceans and the tallest mountains, you have the portal to the end dimension. This is what everything has been leading up to. And it sucks. It's boring and repetitive. It's anticlimactic and uninteractive. It's almost like you're playing an entirely different game. It is, without a doubt, the worst part of every survival world that every player has to go through. To explain why the end dimension is absolutely terrible, let's immerse ourselves in the shoes of a player who's on the final stretch of their journey. You have ventured the overworld of Minecraft. You have conquered the depths of hell. And now you're off to defeat the Ender Dragon. But first, you have to play the most boring part of the game to finish it. Let's begin with the first issue, the Eyes of Ender. What were they thinking when they made this a feature? You know what I like? Balls. I love them balls. We can lead the player in the direction of the end portal by having them grab some balls. Because who needs action, suspense and excitement? When I think of fun, I think of waiting for 5 seconds for the game to decide whether the balls will f*** me over in RNG. The Eyes of Ender are inarguably one of the worst features in the game. Upon being released into the air, they will fly approximately 12 blocks towards the nearest stronghold. After 5 seconds, it will either survive and drop, or shatter and disappear. And with that, I have so many questions. Why not have the Eyes of Ender fly continuously instead of stopping at 12 blocks? Better yet, why not have the Eyes of Ender act as a compass that points you in the direction of the closest end portal? And most importantly, why does each Eye of Ender you throw have a 20% chance of breaking? Serious question, what exactly does the Eyes of Ender breaking add to Minecraft's gameplay? Oh, but it gets worse. What if I told you that the thing that's supposed to lead you to strongholds sometimes doesn't lead you to a stronghold? NANI? Sometimes, an Eye of Ender will just lead you to an empty cave, nowhere even close to a stronghold. In this world, for example, this is where the Eyes of Ender lead me to. And that <laughs> is where the stronghold is. In update 1.18, Moyang added negative coordinates and reworked how Minecraft generates its caves. Strongholds are generated underground, and as such, they were also changed to generate at a wider range of Y coordinates. But unfortunately, Mojang forgot about Eyes of Ender. They later fixed it by making their lowest coordinate Y equals 0 rather than Y equals 30. But that made the issue worse. This issue has been unresolved ever since the 1.18 update and will continue to be unresolved in 1.20. It has gotten so bad, some players have started to recommend using chunk base to find your strongholds instead. In conclusion, the Eyes of Ender are easily one of the most frustrating things about Minecraft. In a game with phantoms and vexes, the Eyes of Ender have some stiff f***ing competition, and somehow, they still manage to secure a spot at the top. But the most painful part of the Eyes of Ender is the fact that they aren't even the worst part of the journey to the end. 
They are followed up by something even worse. The stronghold. I can forgive the eyes of Ender. It's frustrating, it's outdated, and frankly, I'm surprised it hasn't gotten an update yet. But one could always argue that the problem is the stronghold instead, which is even more frustrating and even more in need of an update. At least the eyes of Ender pointed me in the general direction of a stronghold. The stronghold itself doesn't even give you any direction to the portal room. How do you find the end portal? You wander aimlessly and hope that you'll notice it when you see it. These layouts are optimized for maximum playtime. And by maximum playtime, I mean maximum time spent like a lost child in IKEA trying to find their parents. Right before the epic showdown against the Ender Dragon, you first have to spend half an hour running around doors, marking dead ends, and re-evaluating your life choices up to this point. Legitimately, quite possibly the third most boring part of the game. We'll get to the second and first later. Any excitement that I would have had beforehand is completely gone by the time I finally find the end portal. And even then, the game still has the audacity to introduce to me this little pieces of cum wigglers. After all of that, we as a player finally get to go into the end. And it's only downhill from here. The end serves as the grounds for the final boss of Minecraft. When I think of final bosses, a few examples come to mind. I think of the epic battle against Azure Dreamer in Undertale as it brings me on an acid trip through time and space. It's a nostalgic callback to all the monster friends you made along the way. It's a final stretch to the happy ending you deserve. A fitting conclusion for the pacifist route of Undertale. Even the most goofiest of games have an opportunity to shine with their final bosses. Plants vs Zombies is a game about plants fighting zombies. I can't think of any game that gets even goofier than that. And even then, fighting Dr. Zomboss in an all-out attack from the zombies on the rooftop of your house as Brainiac Maniac blasts in the background. When even the predecessor to VeggieTales has an epic showdown against someone who looks like they've watched every episode of Rick and Morty, you kind of have to ask, what's Minecraft's excuse for this weak-ass final battle? First of all, let's talk about how the fight starts. You're dropped into the end and the Ender Dragon health bar appears. That's it? This is how we're introduced to the final boss of the game? I mean, I'm not saying that Mo Yang should introduce the Ender Dragon like this. Although it would be hilarious, and now I wish they did. Sadly, we can introduce the Ender Dragon as cool as possible, but that won't change anything about the fight itself. Fighting the Ender Dragon is the second most boring part of Minecraft, hands down. The one thing, the one goal that unites us all, is the second worst part of the game. And it's mostly because the Ender Dragon doesn't really pose that much of a threat. Compared to other bosses who actively fight back against you at every instance, at most, the Ender Dragon shoots a fireball in your general direction, which is easily avoidable. The Ender Dragon is such a non-issue that you're more likely to die to the Enderman than you are to the Ender Dragon. With the Ender Dragon not being a threat at all, this climatic final battle is more of a chore than an actual fight. First, you have to painstakingly destroy every crystal so it stops healing the Ender Dragon. Then you have to shoot arrows at it as it wanders aimlessly. And then you hit the like button if you're enjoying the video so far. And finally, you have to deal most of your damage when the Ender Dragon perches over the exit portal. It's extremely repetitive and uninteractive. For the final boss of the game, there's nothing that really makes it special past the first time. And there's nothing really to be excited about in this fight. The most exciting thing about this fight is having it be done with. Also, why is the Ender Dragon the big bad exactly? What's the player's motive for fighting the Ender Dragon? Well, the answer is simple. There isn't one. If the players want a motive, then it's up to themselves to come up with their own reasons for fighting the Ender Dragon. For some players, they say their motive is because the Ender Dragon is terrorizing the end. And by defeating the Ender Dragon, we have liberated the end. We freed the Enderman from the dragon's tyranny. But uh, I wouldn't say freed. More like under new management. 
So let's be real, defeating the Ender Dragon was never really the motive. The only reason you had to find an end portal, the only reason you had to defeat the Ender Dragon, and the only reason you had to do all of this is to get an Elytra. If there ever was a future update where Mojang just suddenly decides, hey guys, we're gonna remove the end dimension in update 1.31, the end's end. Mmm, okay, bye. Gamers wouldn't complain about the lack of Eyes of Ender, or the lack of a stronghold, or the lack of dragon eggs, because they're not the reasons that players go to the end for. They will complain about three things, shulker boxes, elytras, and ender dragon heads. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about the part after the ender dragon. It sucks. Elytras are found in the one and only structure that generates in the end, the end city. And once again, there are absolutely no reliable methods to find one. You just have to walk around and hope you find one by luck. You also have to hope that you're lucky enough to find an end city with an end ship. Otherwise, you have to spend even more time finding another end city. I know what some of you are thinking. Isn't this similar to nether fortresses in the nether city? Aimlessly wandering around until you find a nether fortress, and also hope that it has a blaze spawner. What makes the nether different is the fact that there are other types of biomes and structures along the journey. There are the basic nether ways that we're all familiar with, along with nether fortresses. But we also have soul sand valleys, warp forests, basalt deltas, and crimson forests. Variety! Even if I'm frustrated at not finding a nether fortress, there's still a variety of things to keep me entertained in the nether. The end has nothing to make the journey special in comparison. It's enderman, and stone, and corn fruits. Nothing else. The trip to get an elytra is always the part that I look forward to the least in the survival world because it embodies everything about Minecraft that I hate. It's boring, it's time consuming, and ultimately, it just isn't fun. But despite it being the most boring part of the game, that isn't what frustrates me the most. What frustrates me is just how much wasted potential is in this. It's in all of this. There are so many opportunities for an action-packed finale storyline that Mojang simply didn't use. The journey to the end could be a climatic build-up. I've conquered the overworld and I've conquered the nether. Make me feel like I'm about to face the hardest challenge of my life, harder than surviving the nether. And they can easily achieve this by tying a story around the endgame. The stronghold has libraries, empty prison cells, and this weird two-floor stone room with a cobblestone center. Let's redesign the stronghold and play heavily into the occult ritual gone wrong theme it almost has. The stronghold can be changed into a structure inhabited by illagers, much like woodland mansions and pillager outposts. After being exiled, some illagers began to explore the ancient history of the world they live in. They remember of an old folklore that tells of an ender dragon, with powers nothing they've ever seen before, with the strength to destroy the overworld if it so wishes. If they could harness its powers, the villagers would be at their mercy. The damage they could inflict with raids would be catastrophic. And so, the stronghold is their site of research. Some prison cells contain librarians, captured and tortured by the illagers for any information about the end. Some prison cells contain mobs, showing that the illagers spend months hunting down every mob before narrowing it down to the one mob that could open the path to the end, the Enderman. Have a nether portal room as one of the possible generator structures in the stronghold. Show that the illagers have made great progress and are closer to the end than we think. And of course, have the stronghold naturally spawn pillagers and vindicators, with an evoker as a mini-boss before we enter the end. Rewarding players with a totem of undying right before the actual boss fight. This creates suspense. How hard is the Ender Dragon if I'm being given a revival item right before the fight? This Illager storyline would create a motive for the players as well. We venture to the end to stop the Illagers before it's too late and slay the Ender Dragon to put a halt to their plans indefinitely. Until we revive the Ender Dragon of course, but we can work on that later. Now let's move on to the main event, the fight itself. The fight against the Ender Dragon should feel like the final battle that it is. Have the Ender Dragon actively fight back against the player. Make it more hostile. Make it defend the End Crystals. And breathe fire on players if it's nearby to a crystal that the players are about to break. Take a page out of the Phantom's book and have the Ender Dragon dive down and ram the player as an attack. Have the Ender Dragon fly in a straight line, breathing a trail of fire, incinerating any players in its path or even give it mind control powers to turn the Enderman against us at half health. Buying time for the Ender Dragon to regenerate its health back. Let the Ender Dragon feel like a world ending trap. Let's give the players a challenge, so it's much more satisfying when they slay the beast and save the world. 
And finally, the rest of the end dimension could use a bit more life. Have end villages, little purple houses filled with a variant of the enderman, the ender villager or something. They deal twice as much damage and will fling us into the air like iron golems. But killing them has a chance to drop a compass that points us towards the nearest end city. Give the end a bit more variety in its biomes, make it more dangerous and mysterious than the nether. There's a difference between having it eerie and unsettling and having it empty and boring. The pieces are all there for a very cool and fun part of the game and I desperately hope that Mojang realizes that. 1.16 updated the nether. 1.17 and 1.18 updated the caves in the overworld. It's time for the end to get some love as well. But unfortunately, until they do that, until they make the end an interesting journey from start to finish, it will continue to be my least favorite part of the game. The only reason I even explored the end dimension is for the Elytra and Shulker boxes, nothing else. The Elytra is just so useful that I can't afford to skip it. It's so valuable as an endgame loot that I begrudgingly suffer through the end just to get it. In fact, it's so useful and overpowered it has its own controversial history. And if you want to learn more about these controversies, check out this video where I explain exactly that. It explains how a feature that more than half of the player base can't live without has a group of people that hate it instead. I'll see you there.